Thomas E. Wagner, World War II. Tom Wagner served in the United States Army during World War II with the 147th Engineer Combat Battalion, which is part of the 9th Army. Tom operated a D-7 bulldozer on Omaha Beach during the Normandy landings on June 6, 1944 and helped dig one of the first cemeteries on Omaha Beach. I interviewed Tom in his home in Arizona, February 27, 2003, and he's one of my favorite all-time stories, one of the first interviews I ever did. He's close to my heart. Four months after I interviewed Tom, sadly he passed away in Ohio, and I was honored to speak at his memorial service. This story is being made possible by a grant from Mark Carhoff. Mark, thank you. If you would like to sponsor one of these many stories, please contact me. There's information in the video description. Now it is my joy, pride, and pleasure to bring to you Thomas E. Wagner. Okay, I was, my name's Thomas E. Wagner, 3554, 59. Uh, I was in the 147th Engineer Combat Battalion, and we were amphibious, it was Special Forces. And we trained in the United States for the invasion of Normandy. Okay. Now what I want to do is just slowly kind of retrace our steps from, I forget what we talked on the phone, but when you landed on the beach on D-Day, you landed on D-Day. Yes, right? okay. yes. Mm -hmm, what, I did. do you remember what type of craft you went in on? Yes, I was on a, I was on what they call a landing, craft, tanker LCT. And I was on, I had a a D-7 Caterpillar bulldozer is what I was operating. Did you go in with other troops or was no, it just? No, I was. We was by ourselves, mm -hmm. and uh, there was maybe I don't know how many. Foot soldiers was on there with me. They might have been all 25, 30, 40, something like that. I don't know the number. Me, I didn't know them. I, they, I wasn't acquainted with them. You, I, I know you might be a little nervous. If you can try not to rock in the chair. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> after a while, someone's going to go. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm going to get seasick. No. Oh, okay. No, no, it's okay. You, you're, you're doing fine. That's fine. Okay. Just basically, I, I've, I've talked to so many people, and I kind of want to just really slow down and just think about going in on the beach that morning. About what time did you go in, do you remember? It must have been around noon. I can't, because when we were scheduled to go in, they, they held us back. So we didn't go in, we were supposed to go in about nine o'clock in the morning. But we didn't go in at nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know what, I don't know what time it was, because there was chaos on the beach. So we, they didn't, they didn't send me, the, the, the landing craft I was on didn't go in with the, uh, early in the morning, like six o'clock in the morning when the rest of them, now the, the the craft that our company the craft that our company was on it got hit and it was a I got to think what they called it it was a landing craft infantry it was the one that had the the stairways down each side they went in on it and it took a direct hit and it sat right there it never moved and uh, we lost several of our I don't know how many but there's several of our group got killed I mean they didn't make it in but I was on this D-7 bulldozer, and I wasn't lucky me, I guess, <laughs> or however you want to say it. I wasn't on that ship. I was on this landing craft with the bulldozer. And they held me back, and I went in a little bit later. And uh, this how do we keep them from rocking? <laughs> We're gonna strap you down. You want, you know, you're, you're doing great. I don't want. You're doing really good. I don't. And I think that. He's doing good. I just want to I'm used to sitting here rocking in this if chair. If he starts rocking, do something. Give him a sign. Like put your finger mm -hmm. up. A, when she does that, okay. then you know you're rocking. Then mm -hmm. I know it's hard, but maybe okay. I could stabilize the chair some way. You just I said some do. good stuff. I, I want to go back to it. Okay. What I've been asking all the veterans is, um, 
did you realize what you were getting into? Did no. you know if the beach was going to... Did it feel like another maneuver? Did, did you know you're going into something as big as... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, well, yes. Tell, oh, me, yes. tell me what you were thinking about. And were there others around you? Were you scared? Were you praying? Oh, sure you were scared. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't praying, but I was scared. I was scared. Uh, we knew that there was trouble on the beach before we went in. We knew there was everything was backed up. What was supposed to happen on the beach wasn't happening. They were supposed to put in the flags and the stuff up there, so the landing craft, the, the, the what, what would you call them? I, ca I can't. Higgins boats. The Higgins boats. They had a place to land. That's I trained to go in on one of those. If I'd have been a foot soldier, maybe I would have. But the way you know when the thing was set up, we didn't go in that way. And uh, I see, I lost my. No, you're, you're talking about the Higgins boats going in. I asked you what you were thinking about if you're scared. Oh yeah, well we. I remember, I remember it's just a circling out there, and uh, the destroyers was out there since daylight, shooting over the top of our head. We could hear the shells going in, and we was out in the water. You know, we really, you really didn't know what was going on until you got on the beach. When they let that ramp down on that landing craft then then that's when you that's when you could see the beach and could see what's going on but actually the way it was we were when you see when you go to the movies and see this sort of thing you see the whole picture but when we went in on that boat we seen how much on each side not we didn't we didn't see the picture like they like like you see it in the movies all we seen is just right straight ahead what you had to do tell me tell me about I'm <laughs> rocking. <laughs> you know, I, I'll be honest. You know, I, I'm very intrigued by what happened, what you did. I'll never experience that myself. I know there's no glory in war, but best that you can remember when you when you landed on the beach, what comes to your mind? What were you hearing and seeing? Just just tell me, paint a picture of that. Just were they shooting at you? Were the artillery hitting? Were men falling? Were boats no, blown up? No, not not when I went in. The the the. The machine guns that was cross-firing on the beach, they had knocked them out. The rangers and the, they had got in, and the infantry had had them knocked out. Because I was on a, I was on like I keep saying, I'm on this dozer, and I was held back. I wasn't in the first waves. But they called me in, and for the reason the 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 craft that I was on was called in, they uh, they wanted to. Uh, the tanks were coming, you know, the, the tanks were coming in and they couldn't get up on top of the beach. They couldn't get up on above the beach where they had to go and they had to, well, I guess it was the Germans had built this, I guess it was like a moat, as near as I can explain it, so the tanks couldn't go through that moat to, to go on up the beach. And we and there was dozers in there. There was a dozer on the front of a tank. I remember seeing that there. And we built that, well, the first thing I'd done on that beach was, was built that road. Now this is as you as you're out in the on Normandy Beach looking into the land, this road's clear on the right hand side, right at Point de Hoc. And there was a road there that the tanks couldn't get up that hill till we got and I went in there. The first thing I done was was uh leveled that road out and got that road where the tanks can then so the tanks could get on in and go. Okay. What um even though the, that machine gun was knocked out, did you see any wounded or? Casualties? Oh yes, oh yes, yes, what you, yes. What do you remember about oh. that? I mean, well, you're, you're just a young kid. you just blotted them out. You, yeah, they was laying all over. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Anything? No, about anything? I don't. I don't think there's much to say okay. about that. I can say that I got hit later on. What? What? Another job that what we did, the landing craft would come in and they'd drop their. The Higgins boat, they would drop down. Well, maybe they, maybe they couldn't get back out. Maybe they put them in reverse. They couldn't get back out. We'd go out there and shove them. Uh, we'd go out there and shove them back out in the water so they could get back out. And that's how I got. That's how I got hit with a teller mine. I, I run over the tractor with a teller mine, and of course that was the end of the tractor. And then I went back as a foot soldier. Then and then I didn't get. I think it was the following day, maybe, that they gave me another tractor. I don't know where it come from, but <laughs> there was another tractor there. And uh, and the second thing that I can remember that I did, uh, me and another fellow from the 149th Engineers, he was down there working, and we, we, I dug, I helped dig the first cemetery on Omaha Beach with a tractor, and we dug the width of the tractor. Then they had what what they wanted to do. They wanted to clean up all the soldiers. It was on the beach. They had to be all cleaned up for the for the next day. 
for the troops are coming in. So they worked, uh, the 149th worked all night, as I understand it, uh, 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 cleaning up the beach. And they put them in body bags or mattress. To me, they wasn't body bags then, they was mattress covers is what we called them. And they buried them right on the beach. And there's a marker there that the first cemetery on Normandy Beach, is, it's still marked to this day, it's there. And you were and, a part of that. That was a part of that, yeah. That's the two things I can remember, the initial landing of the first couple days that I can remember. That would have been a hard job. Well, like I say, at 20 years old, you just blotted everything out and just did it. The last gentleman I spoke with today, he mentioned that, because um, I asked him a similar question about you know, seeing death and destruction at that age, he said that um, you didn't think about it. No. And he said that they were just eating their dinner right by a dead body. I mean, you don't think about it at that time. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there's a period after the war you think about it. But and I, I guess, again, I'm, I'm intrigued with the fact of you know what happened and, and what was going through your minds and just, just the different stories. But they cleaned up. All the American soldiers was cleaned off over the beach. I think it was the second night. Maybe it was, I'm sure it was the second night. And they were... For the fresh troops that coming in, they didn't want no American soldiers laying on the beach. I mean, the higher echelon. And they were all cleaned up and buried. And they, when they come in, the beach was clean. The Germans was laying there yet. They left them lay. Now here, you weren't supposed to touch them. They made no. be trapped. Well, yeah, that's right. We didn't. Didn't bother them. Did, now, again, when you went in onto the beach, you were in an LCT? Landing craft yeah. tanker. It held, okay. it was, uh, it was like the Higgins boats, only it was just a little bit larger. And I come all the way from England on all night, all night long. We come across the, I never had to transfer anything. I was right on the, we came all the way across. Okay, now who else were you with when you said there were tanks? Were there other people that you worked with on the boat with you or they just mainly They tanks? were foot, they were foot, no, they wasn't. There was just one, one bulldozer. Okay. Just one, I was just on this, one bulldozer was on this landing craft. But there was foot soldiers from another company. I don't know who they were that was on that, was on, that came across with me. And they disappeared when we landed, and I have no idea where they went or what become of them. So when you hit the beach, the machine gun fire had pretty much been stopped? Oh, yeah, it was all stopped then. When was I, there when any, I, anything out in the water before you landed? Was there any artillery shells, or were there machine gun bullets hitting the boat or anything like that, you remember? Or just I can't remember. No, I don't think so. I think, I think it was pretty, starting to get quieted down when I went in. How about the sea? Was it still pretty rough? Was yes, it, was the it sea cold? Was, was it cold? Yeah, it was rough. It was cold. I was lucky I didn't get wet. I must have, when we went in, it must have been about, went down, the water must have been about three foot deep and I was on this dozer and I was just, just above it and was able to, but the guys went, that followed me in or come in behind me, they, they was about waist deep in water. Had you heard anything about the first waves in that morning? Did you know how bad it was? No, I didn't. Probably I didn't, until after we was in, and so I didn't know, I had no idea. But the rangers were the ones that really took the, took the hits. Was the beachhead secure, you think, by the time you got there around noon, or do you think it was? It was secure. I didn't know it was secure, but it was, it was pretty secure, yeah. Do you remember which sector of the beach you were on? De Hawk, where the road goes up on top, where that little town was. I can't, I'm trying to think of the name of that little town. I can't even think of it now. Beerville? Or yeah, something like that. Something I believe like that, that was it, yeah. Um, one of the guys I talked to yesterday said he landed on Easy Red, and they named they, they nicknamed it Bloody Red because of all the. I mm -hmm. guess Easy Red was one of the Could have been. hardest hit mm -hmm. sectors of that beach. And did I ask you? Did you see the movie Saving Private Ryan? Did, mm -hmm. did I ask you that? Mm -hmm. No, you didn't ask okay. me, but I saw it. Did Did any of that beginning and that the beginning of the movie? Did any of that remind you anything yes. of? Yes, what yes, yes, was that like? was the yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. The first, the first 30 minutes or 15, 20 minutes of that film, I thought was pretty authentic, pretty close to the way it was. Those hedgehogs that they had up there. Now that's what I hit was one of those teller mines. Was, I guess it was about 14 pounds of TNT that set on. It got knocked off and was laying in the beach and I run over it with the tractor and of course I blew the tractor up and blew myself up with it. That's, a, that, that's, a, that's how I got, the, I got hit in the, my eye and the side of my face. And they put you back as a foot soldier, you said? Well, yeah, till I got another tractor. Yeah, I just went back with the company as a, as a, as a, 
I guess he'd call it a foot soldier, and, and we just worked on the beach doing whatever, pushed boats back out, whatever had to be done to get them back out so they could bring another wave in. Do you remember when you came in with that wave? Did, were you a part of a wave of LCTs, or were you no, just by yourself? No, by myself. Okay. I remember seeing pictures of just rows of waves coming Well, there were rows of waves, but I wasn't associated with another. I was the only bulldozer. There was no other bulldozers there. That I saw this one other bulldozer dozer that I can recall and he was in the 149th engineer and I met this man down in New Orleans when we was down there and I talked to him I didn't get his name and I didn't get his address he recognized me as being the other tractor there and I recognized him as being the other tractor there but I didn't get his I failed to get his address or and I and, he, and I don't know who he was or I'd recognize if I saw him now but I, I, I failed to get his address or his name. Now, what rank were you at? at I was time? a technician, fifth grade, okay. uh, corporal, so T5. Were you in command of that LCT, or was there like... No, 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 I wasn't, no, no, okay. no. Okay. No, they was, uh, the LCT was, was run by the Navy. They, they, they brought them in. They was, I don't know what rank he was. Did they have a coxswain on the LCT? Yes, like did on yes, the yes. Uh, I mean, the, yeah. The LCVP? Okay. Yeah, yeah. They had, they had a decent, it was powered by a diesel engine. I think there was two, maybe two guys on it. Because they brought it all, they did a wonderful job. They brought it all the way across. I bounced all the way across from uh, wherever the marshalling area was in England. Maybe you know what it is. I, I forget the name of it. Uh, Not Ham Southampton, South was it? Or, well, uh, Plymouth, or what was it called? Southampton, it wasn't it? Tea, it? I know we started out, and then we went back in, and then we started out the next night. We was, we was on all, it took us all night to cross. Now, did I hear you say earlier that you had been on a Higgins boat? or, or Oh, yeah, I've trained on it. Yes, we trained on Higgins boats, yes. Give me a little historical perspective. What you remember anything about the Higgins boat? Well, they were made out of plywood, as I remember. And they had a, they had a, they was the same thing that I came over on, only the one I was on was just a little bit larger, which carried the dozer, which just carried them in, and you just, those things just went in, and the front end dropped down, and out you went towards the beach. We practiced as combat engineers, amphibious combat engineers, to come down the, the, and load on, on those Higgins boats from the, from the mother ship. Come down the cargo, cargo nets, you'd climb, you'd climb right down. Tell me about that. Just, even though was, uh, you were practicing, tell me about what that was like. What, what's in, involved with coming down those nets? What do you well, you, you, you had your full pack on with your rifle, the whole works, and you swung over the top, and you came right down those cargo nets, right down into the, to the Higgins boat, and as soon as you got your load, they took you in and took you into the beach. That's how that, that's what that was. As I remember that, what we trained. I trained for it, but like I say, I later on when we got ready to make the landing, I was I got got to be an operator of the dozer, and of course then I was I wasn't involved in that. Then when when our company came in, they didn't go on the Higgins boats either. They was on this landing craft infantry, I think they called it, and they went in on that. The company did. LCI that held a lot more soldiers. Yeah, held a lot more soldiers. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think the Rangers and, and those, and maybe the part of the infantry went in on the Higgins boats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard that, well, actually, when they debarked and got into the Higgins boats for the first waves, that the, the, the wind and the waves were so hard that it was really dangerous. And some people fell and got Oh, hurt. sure, yeah. They was down underneath. They had a full pack on, was heavy, and down at the bottom they went. They couldn't, no way you could swim unless they got rid of that pack. Yeah. I was just kind of curious. Did they go in rows of threes down those nets, or was there an order to that? Or just, do you remember when you practiced? Or There was an order to it, but I don't remember what it was now. I just remember swinging over the on the ship and... Climbing down the ladder, it was just rope. It was just like a rope ladder, and you jumped into the boat when you hit the bottom. You said they're plywood. Was there sheet metal on the outside? Of I the think boat? they were, yeah. But they were, they were, they weren't very rigid, mm -hmm. <laughs> rigid boats. Do you remember if the men stood or sat down on those Higgins boats, or even the LCTs? Were the the soldiers were they sitting or were they standing? Do you remember? I can't remember. Well, I heard because of the German fire that they'd be sitting, but then I heard because you wanted to see out what was going on, you're standing. And I've seen two different pictures of what I assumed was a Higgins boat versus maybe it was an LCT. It seemed like the sides of the LCTs were higher, maybe, with the Higgins boat slower. The know. landing craft tanker that I want—they were higher. They were metal. They were steel. They were st made of steel. It was—it was a larger. It was a larger than the Higgins boat. Diesel. Yeah, powered by diesel engine. Mm -hmm. 
And again, was there a, I, I'm not sure, the, was there a coxswain or who drove the boats? Coxswain, I guess, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was yeah. a separate person to lower ramps or was it the same person? You they did it from the back. They just cut, they just released something and that, that ramp would go right down, fall right down. And as soon as they'd get you unloaded, they was gone if they could get if they wasn't stuck on the sand. Well, I, I talked to a coxswain yesterday who went in for the first and the second waves. Quite a story, but um, he was a navy man that was put into the role of a coxswain and, and found himself shuttling these soldiers to shore. And then he says, when they it was the way that things were supposed to work, but sometimes they didn't they, they it didn't work that way. They'd be stuck there and they couldn't get back out. And then I heard a lot of soldiers were let off in deep water and yes. because of the packs they drowned. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't really release that. Mm -hmm. Well, if they'd hit a sandbar out there, they'd, they'd think that was the beach. They'd think, they thought they was in shallow water. They'd drop the ramp down. Well, there they was. They wasn't in shallow water at all. <laughs> they were just on a sandbar. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see how we're doing here. on the uh, To worry about the... You said you got hit by a mine in your... Mm -hmm. While you're making a road, did, were you uh, all a little fearful that the whole beach was lined with mines, or to make that well, road to go through? Well, they could have been, but I didn't realize that at the time. I didn't even realize what I'd hit till after after they told me that I'd hit a mine. I didn't the, the blew the track off the tractor. It was a but these mines, as I understood, it was on sitting on top of those hedgehogs at high tide when they'd come in, and they got of course they got knocked off, and and this one was in the sand. And when I went out to push a boat out, I don't remember, it was a, I don't know, it was one of the landing crafts, I don't know what it was, but I never made it out there. I mean, I hit the track and that was the end of the tractor. And then I went back as just a regular soldier with the, with the platoon till the, I think the following day and then I had another tractor. They gave me another tractor and that's when I went down. And the first job I remember doing was, was digging that cemetery. What do you remember as a young man regarding, uh, I mean, did you feel like you were fighting for God and country? Were your thoughts back home and all, or were you just so focused on your job that, you know, you did your job, or were you scared? You mentioned, you know, I'm sure everybody was scared, but what are you thinking at a time like that? Even though the beach wasn't really as bad as it was at the first waves, but, I mean, did you want to be there? I mean, what were you thinking? I mean, Well, I don't have, I can't ha I don't have any thoughts on that. Okay. I was just there. A civilian soldier is what it was. Mm -hmm. I was just like, well, say, like you being drafted. And, yeah, you were drafted. And the way, and that was it. You said you weren't afraid till they gave you that power. Well, when we, before we crossed the channel, you never was too concerned. It was just more or less like practicing, well, let's, let's do it, you know, young, go, go. So they give you that packet on your cartridge belt, which we never used until they got ready. They, Pass them out that had the morphine and the sulfa in it. Then you said, whoa, well, <laughs> these guys, there's a chance that you're going to get hit. You know, there's something that could happen to you. And that's really the first time that I ever give it too much thought that it was just going to be a walk in the park. And then you realize it's, it's serious business now. It wasn't practice anymore. I remember that. I remember that. Uh, yeah, I was 19 years old. So were you freshly into the service and, and really I'd been in a year but we practiced from the time I went in the service in in 1943 this is all we did was practice for this landing I was in the combat engineers and we trained in Florida and Virginia and then in Peyton and Torquay England and then and then for the landing did you realize the magnitude of that Didn't, operation had no idea no idea did you get a letter from Eisenhower that morning I think or whatever? It, I think I did, yeah. stated yeah. the mission and God yeah. bless you. I think I have that back here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, probably, I keep forgetting what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. When you were wounded, were the medics readily available? Or were you no, they wasn't. Uh, they was a corpsman, that's all it was. And I never, I never, re I never went to any... Uh, if you went to the hospital then, they put you on a gurney and took you back out. You, took, you went back out to ship because there was no kind of, there was no, just first aid's all you had there on the beach. And they had gurneys lined up there, you know, and they was, they was, as soon as they could get transportation, they took them back out. 
took him back out on the ship's boat in the harbor. I had one gentleman tell me that he was so frustrated because there were a lot of wounded on the beach that if they would have been helped, they would have lived. Oh, sure, sure. I oh, mean, there, there's no way to... Did you find yourself able to help anybody? Or no. No, I was on the tractor. I, that's where that's where I spent my time. Oh yeah, they was they was on gurneys. You they was lined up. They was lined up from well, not as far as you could see, but but they were waiting on transportation to get back out. The Cormans was there with them. I'm sure that there's a lot of them could have been helped had they been facilities there, but they were they just were no facilities. What do, what do you think about D-Day now, looking back? I mean, was it something we... I had no idea. I didn't realize it was what it was till... Oh, I think probably till the 50th anniversary they started talking about D-Day, Normandy and D-Day. That was a long time later. <laughs> Did you have friends over there that you knew or made it or didn't make it? I mean, Oh, sure, yeah, they... Mm -hmm. I have a list of the ones that was killed in our company on, on the beach that didn't make it. And it's the prints are darn fine on it, I can't read it. I don't know whether there's photography that can, can blow that up where I can read that or not. I've, I've, never, I've never done anything about it. They might be. Yeah, you could probably scan it and then increase the size of mm -hmm. it on a computer. Do you have that here? Mm -mm. No, I got that back there. Yeah, because I can scan things and then enlarge them and enhance them. Yeah, that can be done. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. I've been asking all the veterans this, so think about this before you answer it. But in light of what you went through, and when I hang my flag back in Colorado every day, I think of men like you that were involved in D-Day in any capacity. I have a lot of respect. And I believe the freedoms that I have today are a result of what you sacrificed and the ultimate sacrifices of those men who didn't come back. What would you say to today's younger generation based on looking back and looking at our lives now and the freedoms that we have? You know, I guess my question is, how would you have, how would you tell kids that they should live their lives today? You know, I mean, again, there's a lot of freedoms. A lot of people don't realize. Well, I what think they that's, did. I think that's what it was all about to give them, the, give them the right to live the way they're living now. <laughs> that's what it was all about. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say to a young person? What kind of advice would you give them? What would you say? <laughs> I know you got something to say. Well, I mean, what are you what, what are you going to tell today's youth? I mean, what could you say? Well, I don't think I don't think it would hurt the youth to 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 take a two year stint in the army and the service and like we did. I don't think that'd hurt you at all. Because a lot of a lot of people today, the young people today, have no intention. You know, this war that's coming on right now, they have no intention of going and fighting in it. And I, I, it's like Israel has that law that I think they, what, they spend two years or something like that. I think that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's all right. You think time's put a lot of distance between World War II and today? I think people are forgetting? Well, I don't know. There seems to be a lot of interest in, in, the, in the veterans of World War II. I've noticed it in the last, what, 10 years? More than in the, in the previous 50, I think. I think the young people now, you, you hear more about it now, and uh, it's just like the Purple Heart emblem I got on my license plate. I never even thought about putting that on the car until four or five years ago. I never, I never even mentioned it to anybody or never, never done anything about it. Here, here it showed up, everybody had these license plates on. Well, I, wife talked it over, and I said, well, I, I didn't get wounded bad enough to... They gave me a purple heart, but it wasn't of less than 10%, so I figured I didn't have no business having that license plate on, but I went ahead and got it anyway, so I, it's on the car now. He's got a piece of shrapnel in it by his eye. Oh. A lot of soldiers that really deserve it. I mean, they've got legs missing and arms missing and mentally incapacitated, and mm -hmm. my mental capacity didn't bother at all. I, I withstood it fine. Or anything else you want to say about what I've asked you, or anything in and around that, or you've said a lot. You really you've covered a lot of ground. I just thought I'd give you a chance if there's anything else you want to talk about, or I don't know how much he talks to the family or has talked, but I don't know if you he think never would say not anything. not too much. Years, okay. but you know, I was going to ask you, Tom, when he was asking what you have to say to the youth, and that is to put a couple of years in the service. 
what do you feel that you brought back with you from that experience that they really need? Well, I think it, it makes you appreciate your country. I mean, it makes, it makes you appreciate what it's all about, why, why you're living in the United States. So I, I think it uh, for you get you get uh, people can go to the service now. They can get college. They can get all kinds of uh, of uh, of uh, expenses. I know I have a nephew. He was helped through college. He went in the service for oh well, he was in for ten years, but he got a he got enough to put himself through college when he when he got out. And a lot of them even can go to the service and go right into college, you know, they can study. That's a lot of them, that's all they do while they're in the services is uh, take college courses. I never did, I never took any. That was a good question. Yeah, and good. also, you know, you, you probably made friends over there, a few friendships, and is there any memorable fun times that you had, something that you remember out of those experiences? Something mm. fun you guys did or something that you remember that's... Yeah, we drank some beer. Yeah, we had some fun. <laughs> well, what, what, one more question. What was the, you probably have already said it, but what was the hardest part of the landing or the initial day? Probably the, I'm assuming the cemetery part. Wasn't that probably the toughest thing? or was that? No, it really wasn't too bad. All I, all we, all I did is just, we just dug the trenches. The poor guys that was taking them out of the trucks and placing them in the, this, this, this cemetery was moved on up to where it is now, later on. But we just had to clean up the beach. The guys that had to pick up the guys and put them in the trenches, and, and they, they had a, they, it probably weighed on their mind more than it did us just doing the digging. It's kind of interesting. The last guy I talked to mentioned the fact that they dug holes on the beach and took a bulldozer and buried them. Yeah. That's, well, that's what the what last That's what I did. Yeah, I know. I know. And, and then I come over here and I hear it. I mean, it's like, wow. Oh. Yeah. But you had to do something. Didn't yeah. Nice well, they had to. They had to be buried right away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was. The, I was one of the guys that did that. And me and another tractor was there. I wish I'd had. I have no way of getting contact with him, or I just. I seen him in New Orleans. And he had this. How I. How I. Got acquainted with him. That he had a uniform on. And he had the same insignia that I wore, and the same seahorse, and the. Buried everyone. They were right there. It was right down on the. We, the, the, the cemetery was right on the sand, right on the beach. It was a temporary. It was just temporary. They moved it. I don't know a week or so later. Probably moved it up to where it is now. I don't know. Up there, imagine. Mm -hmm. Were the were the naval guns firing when you landed? I mean, yeah. was it loud? Oh yes. What were, you, you, what were you hearing? I mean. Oh, you could hear them shells go right over top of your head. <laughs> Hear them roar. They'd go right. Over. Yeah, you could hear them. Yeah, they shelled. They started shelling that beach before daylight. Kept right on the shelling. I don't. I can't remember when they quit, but I. But it was just like we come up to a, like we were driving out through uh, in a, a field, and they came right up over that. That that picture of uh, of. Uh, ships was on out farther and they were shooting right over top of your head. You could hear the shells go right on in, right over your head. What does it sound like again? Just a roar. Didn't Not so much of a whistle, it was more of a roar. Just Yeah, you could hear them. You could hear them cut right through the air. Were the Germans shooting 88s or whatever? 88s, yeah, that's, that's what they... And machine guns, they had crossfire. They had machine guns on those beaches. And they they was crossfire, you know. They'd shoot. They was what they call crossfire like that, and you couldn't get. It was almost impossible for those rangers and those infantry to get on the beach. They just couldn't make it. They'd mow them down. But enough, they put enough in there that they finally made it on up to the get up to the bank. The bank was real steep. It went right straight up. As soon as they got up there, then they couldn't. They was out of. They wasn't out of harm's way, but it was a little bit safer right there than it was. Out, out on the sand. But it took a lot of soldiers. Uh, it took a lot of casualties. Yeah, that, before they could get to that point. Though. Yeah, that's that's what it was. Before they could get on get on in. Then after they got on in, they had to get up on top of the beach. <laughs> they had to get on up, up that hill. You think just the fact that so many soldiers kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, Germans couldn't keep up with them. Yeah, that, that was part of it. You know, yeah, they were just overwhelmed. Were there a lot smaller numbers? 
for the Germans then? Oh yeah, I think I think they were. I think they were. And I think I don't know whether this is I don't know whether this is a hundred percent right or not, but I think the soldiers that was guarding the beach there were older. Were, were older soldiers. I don't think they were. The, I don't think they were young combat troops. I think there's more like the National Guard or the militia that we had. We call them, and that was their job to guard the beach. I don't know if that's right or not. I heard that that's that's what it was. I heard that they weeded out the older soldiers because they wanted the younger ones that were not really knowing what to expect. Right. They felt that they, that was the mentality that they wanted on the beach or something like that. Where they pull out the older fellas because they they're too predictable or something. Yeah, I don't know, it could like it could be yeah could be could be. Yeah, I just I, I don't, don't know whether that's I don't know whether, like I say I don't know whether that's fact or not. I don't have no idea. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stop this because when we went when I first went in the service and took basic training in Texas, then when when we when we went from when we went from basic training to advanced training. That's when we started, that's when we went to Florida, went to Fort Peace, Florida, and we started training for amphibious. That's when we were in, and we didn't know that, but we were planning, they were training us for the invasion of Normandy at that time. Then we went to, we went to Virginia, and we trained in, we trained in Virginia the same way, on the Higgins boats and all these boats. Then we went to England, and we was on the water right there, and, and, and we still trained for amphibious training there. Then we went. I don't where were we Southampton is that where we left to go to to Torque. go to oh, that or Torquay and Payton that's where that's where we trained kept advanced training and we went on over there so that started our company or our brigade I was in the sixth brigade and that that and we trained for the invasion of Normandy I'm sure now later that how that all worked out that that was planned two years in advance. Why did you Why did you personally train on the Higgins boats and end up on an LCT? How did that happen? Well, it was it was all part of the it was all part of our training. You did when you was a soldier, when you was a private, a foot soldier. You didn't know whether you was going to be, you didn't know whether you was going in on a Higgins boat, or you didn't know whether you, you didn't know what status you was going to be. So I got I got picked, or I I don't know whether I I think I think they picked me. One I was a born and raised on a farm. And I was a, acquainted with tractors, mm -hmm. you know. That's mm -hmm. so I was young, so I could run a farm tractor. And I guess, what do you want? Would you like to train to operate the bulldozer? So that, that's when I took training to operate a bulldozer. And then I got promoted to a PFC, then a technician fifth grade, which is a corporal. And that and then I was a dozer operator. Well, when I become a dozer operator, I was no longer training as a combat soldier, as a foot soldier, to, to come down the rails on the to get on the Higgins boat I wasn't in that I, 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 I wasn't training for that anymore so they so they put me on the then I went to the landing craft tanker was a bigger boat and practiced bringing that tractor in and and uh, so that's what I ended up with bringing in on the beach okay. yeah. so that's how you that's how you you basic training you train to do all that stuff but as you as they move forward and thin the thing out or or improve the how much how much I know what you're saying. yeah to get it uh, to train for the different aspects of it and so I ended up being a bulldozer yeah. operator <laughs> I so you and I, all through the service that's what I did I did that all and that's what's on my discharge and we pushed them and we, while we was on the beach we pushed the boats back out if they'd get stuck on the sand or fixed roads and approaches then when we moved inland then we we'd uh, they'd build bridges we'd uh, I'd build the approaches to the bridges so they could get the tanks and the trucks and whatever had to be over the over the water and fix potholes and rained a lot dug holes along the side of the road to drain the water off to keep keep the transport keep everything moving very necessary part yeah <laughs> But that's what that's what combat engineers did, and then if they if they had to fight, they, you had to fight. You was the same as an infantryman. Seemed like there would have been more of you. Just a couple of you, you said, were doing that. I mean, they didn't have a whole bunch of you with the bulldozer. No, just there, there was two it's two dozer. Was, it was there's just two two bulldozers. Is all. Oh, you mean on the beach? Well, a lot of them I think got hit and got knocked out. I'm sure. I'm sure that happened. But I remember just the two that was that dug that cemetery. 
But later on, there was more dosers there as you brought them in. The first, the first I know. I, I know. <clears throat> well, that yeah, that first one that blew up. I don't know. I don't know where they got the second one at. I don't know where it come from or how it got there. Whether <laughs> I have no idea. Mm -hmm.